It's a beautiful Saturday here in Midtown Atlanta. Sunday, Sunday. It's not Saturday was yesterday. Today is Sunday. Georgia Tech versus Clemson here at the Mu. We had the game yesterday. Obviously, Clemson came out on top, but we're going to play two today as both teams are getting ready for today's matchup. It's going to be a fun one. Bryce Kuhn alongside Sam Piernunzi. Sam, you take a look at game one. Nelliman was on the mound for Georgia Tech. Not a bad effort, but Clemson just kind of took advantage, and right there, Georgia Tech offense was 1-10 for runners in scoring position. Yeah, a tough day for the Georgia Tech offense. Not a whole lot of production, which, of course, you can see with the 10 hits from Clemson. That's what ultimately led them to their win for the day on Saturday. Clemson on the other side. Cagle with a big-time performance. Seven innings strong for the Tigers pitcher. We take a look at Georgia Tech and their starting lineup. Mallory Black was two for three, a big day, a double. And, Sam, you pointed out it was a big-time double. She was swinging the bat well. Big-time double, opposite field, over the head of the right fielder off the wall, scored multiple runs to keep Georgia Tech in the game for a good good portion of the game yesterday. A balanced attack for the Yellow Jackets. They'll look to get back together offensively. As we take a look there, a Calf will be back behind the plate after some uh, switching earlier this weekend. And now the starting lineup for your 2021 Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Leading off the catcher, the freshman from the Indian Nebraska, number 25, Emma Cowell. Daddy Stephens, from the fielder, the junior from Powell, Tennessee, number 4, Timothy Cowden. Daddy Third, the left fielder, the junior from Oxford, Georgia. As we get ready for first pitch here, it's a beautiful day. We finally have some fantastic weather, Sam. I know that was a concern. You talked about it last week. We've got some great weather. It's, what, 53 degrees, sunny day. And I think when you look at this matchup, you're going to see two teams, a team in Georgia Tech that had a great week last weekend. They're struggling this weekend. But, hey, that can all change if you can win two or at least one today. Yeah, you know, it can all change. I think what's super interesting about this season in particular is you're coming off of such a, a weird situation last year, right? So both teams are eager to get on the field, especially Clemson in their inaugural season last year that got cut short. Um, and then and then you have you have opening weekend last weekend, and then this weekend, you, we have two teams that have been playing for four days straight. Mm -hmm. A lot of softball, a lot of energy. We have a, a, a really great weather day, some warm weather. So uh, I think vibes are high. Energy is high. Uh, we have a great win from Clemson, but then a tech team that's going to want to come back and get a little bit of revenge. They got a chip on their shoulder. Not a great weekend to get them started. So it should be a, it should be a fun matchup. And you talked about uh, last year in the weird year. Yesterday was actually Clemson's first ever ACC road win. ACC so in program history, a young program, but they're looking to make some noise here today. This would be a big statement for them. They come off against a tough series against Virginia Tech. They have a chance here to kind of sweep this season series and set the tone for themselves in conference play. Certainly set the tone. And what's funny about that is I actually read a report that, they, that said that Clemson had their backs packed for their first ACC series, and then yeah. nothing. Nothing. Then they nothing. To, they, they had to unpack, and, and then Unpa the world changes. Pack, it, it. pack it up, unpack, and like you said, world's changed. So uh, for, for, our, for our starting pitcher today, freshman Reagan Spencer, this is actually her first start in her freshman yeah. career. So looking forward to seeing what she has to bring to the table for this, for, for this Clemson bullpen. And it's always really interesting to see how a freshman keeps their composure and their first start on the mound. Well, she was last time out was against uh, on February 19th against Virginia Tech and a good Virginia Tech team. We saw them earlier today taking on Florida State. She only she faced 15 batters, no walks, and only one earned run and three hits. So you talk about the composure at a young age coming in, brand new program, high profile conference. I mean, you got to like what you see so far. Well, absolutely, and you just saw the Hokies lay it on Florida State, right? That is an offensive team that is to be reckoned with. So for a freshman pitcher to be able to keep the, a team like the Hokies in their offense on their toes is a tremendous testament to what we're going to see here today. So Emma Kapp will step into the box and we'll be underway here soon. Spencer on the in the circle for Clemson. And that one stays high. Kalf, listen, she's going to be a table setter for this team, the freshman. She's going to kind of go, wherever this team goes, she's going to have to set the table here to start off. So, you know, it's going to be really difficult for me to keep the the labels straight on years, right? Because I consider Cal a COVID freshman. So yes. we saw her come out last year in their first handful of games and make a statement with her power, make a statement with her presence in the box. And you can see that she she's a leadoff, so she sets the tone. 
batting from the left side. Cal, one of those, you, you have super seniors, and then you have these COVID freshmen that have COVID to come freshmen. in, and they've, they've got Veteran. some experience under their belt. Yeah, I but think, I think a, a, a proper way to put it would uh, be a veteran freshman is I, what I yes. think uh, some of our colleagues have been referring to them as. Kalf will lead it off at the first three. Cowden Stanford behind her. As that one uh, up near the dome, Kalf's got to get out of the way. And listen, Georgia Tech, that you want to start early, too. You don't want to start from behind. We've seen that kind of happen, and Tech struggled when they don't strike first. Hey, top of the first year, you'd love to get things rolling. Top of the first, you want to get things rolling. What, what's interesting about this team? As that's grounded foul left side. What's interesting about this team is not only do you have Clemson on the field, who is a brand new program. Mm -hmm. So players that have transferred in, recruits that are ready to get started, ready to set set the tone for this Clemson program. And then you on the flip side have what, I mean, I hate to use the word rebuilding because it seems like it's been rebuilding for generations now, but a rebuilding Georgia Tech team, right? We have Coach Morales who's still in her rebuilding season, if you will, of her uh, debut as a head coach. Now this is her third full season. Third full season. Full yeah. season, yes. right? So um, there's, a, there's a lot of moving parts and this one's flip of the bat. That'll leak into left field. Hey, you were talking about what you need to do in leadoff. Just get on any way Just you can. Just get on any way you can. Just saw a lot of pitches worked into a full count. Kind of poked at this one. So you see her weight is off, and she just throws her hands at that low outside pitch and takes it opposite field, which honestly, really all you got to do with that pitch uh, just to stay in it. Um, we've seen Tech strike out looking a lot, so a, a nice adjustment from your leadoff hitter. Just protecting the count. That was a full count to Cal. So here comes Cal to the plate with a runner at first. Tech trying to look for an opportunity. Runner takes off. And ball squirts away, but she will be safe anyway. So, hey, we talk on Clemson's side. We're, we'll get to that. They got some people that can run, but Tech showing some aggressiveness on the base pass here early. Not surprised, though. Uh, with, with Morales leading the charge for the Georgia Tech offense, fiery aggressive base runner in her time and her career and so now she's instilling that same culture into her team we're going to see a lot of extra bases from both sides runner now at second as that one catches a little low and outside but catches the corner junior from tennessee now back-to-back -back lefties in this lineup you talked about Cal when you saw the lineup sam you were like oh i see her right there in the in the two hole she's going to do some damage in this spot oh statement maker cowden is an, a really interesting addition to this Georgia Tech lineup. We saw her in the first, uh, in the opening weekend, came out multiple home runs. Making a statement. Critical, for critical one. home runs. Lots of runs scored. Uh, not to be surprised. Came back for weekend number two. Struggled a little bit, right? Now your nerve, the the adrenaline has worn off, and now you've you've made such a name for yourself that you get back in there. People watch film on you now, right? They have a more developed approach on how to pitch to you. So it's maybe not going to be as many home runs against a program like Florida State. Count skies, this one foul staying alive. So Tech. it'll be interesting to see her kind of settle back into the lineup and, and kind of work through some of that freshman ex inexperience against experienced programs. Until you talk about those, you know, those programs they faced that opening weekend, then you turn around and face two of the top programs, rising, <laughs> one of the most rising programs in the conference, and then this one. There's a skied fly ball to left field ranging into foul territory. Wynn might have played a little bit in that, but it'll be out number one. Let's look at the defensive alignment for the Clemson Tigers. They're good offensively. They're also good in the field as well. You got Cagle, who was pitching yesterday. She's going to play the field. She can swing the bat as well. Clark and Gambarda. And then that infield, Bigham, Gilstrap, Pereira, and Matamore from third to first. And then the battery is Spencer and Hyatt. Yeah, and like we talked about, this is, I mean, I don't know if you can call it inaugural season. Call it what you will, but an, a really powerful program. Uh, to, to start off this Clemson team. And, and you're going to see that defensively. You're going to see that in the batter's box. You're going to see that around the bases. Um, just a really impressive squad to go ahead and kick off that, that program. Stanford steps in with a rudder in scoring position. This tech lineup features some uh, features some pop. We've seen that. We saw that on that opening weekend, like Sam was saying. Stanford got in on the party that opening weekend, but 
I think Texas is trying to find their rhythm offensively here as they look to uh, try to, you know, maybe split, maybe take both of those games today. This one Definitely. roped down the third base line. The camera couldn't even keep up with it. A diving grab by Bingham. Sam, that's a converted second baseman playing third base. She played second base at Hot Herman. Corner. And, uh, Hot corner. That's a sign of an athlete, though. That's a competitor. So you see Stanford, a power hitter, cranked on this. And what a phenomenal dive. Um, to your point. Being thrown into the hot corner is no joke, right? But, uh, and I, I heard Haley Downs talk about this yesterday. Whenever you have hitters, right? If you're hitting, you're going to find a way in that lineup. You're going to find a way on that field. And so when you have really talented hitters all across the board, that means that sometimes if you're hitting the ball, they're going to find a place for you in the field. And that might mean flexing a little bit, moving over to the hot corner. Um, and to no surprise, Clemson has athletes. So being thrown into a position that you're not as comfortable with and making raw athletic plays, just your knee-jerk reaction is athleticism, that means that uh, there's a bright future ahead for Clemson. I'll tell you, too, that also probably saved a run. Calf yeah. probably came in from second, so that's a big play. You talk yeah, about that stayed fair. That definitely would have scored a run. And you talked about the experience. I mean, this it's a young program, but they've brought in a lot of transfers, Bingham being one of those over at the hot corner. We'll talk about that as we go further into the broadcast. That's first pitch to Awald. Another slugger in this lineup, the junior from just down the road in Marietta. Yeah, and kind of going back to my point earlier about rebuilding and kind of setting the tone. The difference, the key difference that I want you to pay attention to with this Georgia Tech lineup is coming off of last weekend, a 5-0 and weekend where there was a tremendous amount of offensive production. That's not something that we would have typically seen from the Jackets. Usually a pretty slow starting team offensively in, in, in years past, starting out with a losing record. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing changes, we're seeing adjustments being made year to year, and you're going to see a lot of pop and power that might not have been there yesterday, uh, kind of come back alive as looking to, to even out that record to close out the weekend. Spencer with an opportunity here to get out of a jam. It's Calf who led off with a single and a stolen base. Just misses low. Good pitch there, but even a better job of uh, watching that yeah. one go by. Great 0-2 pitch there for Spencer, keeping it around the plate. Like I said, lots of striking out looking for the Yellow Jackets this weekend, so it's clear that they're, they're sensitive to the strike zone. They go low inside once again. She doesn't offer at it. Tech's shown the ability to work the count and try to wait for their pitch. Maybe that was some of the, you know, anxiousness that came from. You, got, you had that offensive onslaught in the first time around. As this one speared left side, that's going to stay fair. Kick off the glove. Actually, be a foul ball. So Pepper in that third base line. Bingham got a glove on it. Home plate umpire said, no, <laughs> no, no go. Not today. Take another look at this foul ball up the line. We see it definitely oh, wow. bouncing foul territory. Morales still tried to give it a, a good sell, though. Love the point. Yeah, love the just just a subtle point. Fair. Fair. You know, just a just a subtle point. Come on, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be two balls, two strikes, two a wall. She's a businesswoman. This is outside once again. So it was 0 and 2. Awald's worked it to full now, really making uh, Spencer work for this one. Yeah, you know, freshman pitcher, it can be really intimidating to hang around the zone with two strikes. You never want to give up a big hit when you have when you come ahead in the count. Goes too far inside, so another two out base runner. That'll put runners first and second for Georgia Tech. We talked about how important it would be for the Jackets to uh, strike first. You got to think it'd be a great opportunity right here, but just went a little too far inside with this one. Definitely up and in. She knew uh, as soon as the pitch left her hand, you saw AWOL kind of brace for impact there and take it right off her Evo shield. Not too much damage done, though, thanks to, thanks to her elbow guard. You throwing out a sponsorship opportunity for yourself right there? <laughs> Get sponsored by Evo Shield? <laughs> Crosby Huckabee, the senior, will take the plate now. Steps into the box. Huckabee with a dinger yesterday. That was, it's one, it was one of those two. 
due to the camera angle that we have, we couldn't tell. But when you're watching it, Ooh. I mean, that was a no doubt. Right off the bat, there's a certain there's, sound. Absolutely. I mean, you could tell based on how slow she came out of the box. That's always my favorite part. But whenever a hitter gets a hold of a pitch so much, and this might this actually might have been in the fourth state. Our, our production crew is very kindly fact correcting check. us. They're fact, fact they're fact checking us. They're not letting us have any big news here. Uh, whenever you have a home run that's absolutely no doubt about it off the bat, it's a little awkward, right? Like the whole stadium kind of gets quiet and you kind of just have to sit and watch and see what's going to happen. Uh, and then of course everybody gets excited, but home runs are fun, man. She's got a good hitter's count here. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that definitely was Florida State. We're getting our we're getting our weekend mixed up. It's tough. It's a, it's been a long week in the softball. Yeah, in, in our defense, we we've had a fantastic week here in Atlanta of softball. Obviously, we had Virginia Tech and Florida State play earlier today, and then these two teams matching up for a doubleheader on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. And back to back hit by pitches. Now the first one hit the Evo Shield. That one's uh, right off the kneecap. Definitely kneecap. Definitely did not feel as good as the Evo Shield one. So we see Spencer trying to work in. So she's, she's two and two count. And you see this screw ball just continue to work in right off that back in her knee. <laughs> and I'll tell you too, as a young pitcher, you want to Kinda establish the inside of the plate. I mean, you don't want to be afraid to do that, but yeah. having some trouble right now. Love, love how aggressive. And, and we see Spencer staying around the zones. She's been a little bit wild with her pitches. We're seeing her consistently going hard inside, but not quite able to command the control that requires to stay in the count. She's been working ahead, and with two strikes, needing to really close the gap there and get the job done. So here's one of my favorite players to watch, Bree Roper, just the way she carries herself. Uh, you talked earlier just about her attitude on the field. I mean, a prime opportunity for one of the better hitters in this Tech lineup. Bases loaded with two outs. Definitely a quiet confidence, and it's been really fun to watch Roper develop as a player over the last couple of years. And I'll never forget her freshman season. Might have even been her very first collegiate home run was a grand slam, and that's when you know you've arrived. Right? You got a you got a good you got a good player. You got a good career ahead of you. She's been a fun one to watch. Roper, the Woodstock, Georgia native. With a prime opportunity here, base is loaded. She'll have to protect here with two strikes. Keeps battling. Tech's going to have done a good job of that here in the top half of the first. Yeah, you know, hopefully when you have a lot of Ks looking, when you're a little bit unsure, it seems like they were the confidence at the plate wasn't nearly as high against Florida State and with Clemson yesterday, and so... It's nice to see it's a little bit more defensive with two strikes, defending the zone, not necessarily putting together bad swings, but, but fouling off of those pitches that aren't hittable so that you can stay in the count. Perfect example is that swing right there. Exactly. Obviously fooled on a little bit, but just had to get the bat head out there exactly. to stay alive. So Spencer, in her first start, experiencing some trouble here with the bases loaded. This one's hit fly ball left field, ranging into foul territory. Cagle couldn't come up with Not it near the fence. Quite. The you saw her hesitate right there at the end and looked like she was tracking it and had a shot, but glanced up to check the fence and then we'll take another look here. You see her hesitate, and then when she pulls her head back up, not only is she a little too far in, so her angle wasn't far enough back, but just had kind of lost the ball. So another one-two pitch coming for Roper. Right back up the middle. This will be fairly routine. They'll take the short way to second, and Clemson gets out of the jam. They load the bases, but we're going to head to the bottom of the first with the Tigers. We're back here at the Mew, Clemson and Georgia Tech. The Tigers will take the dish for the first time. You look at the lineup there. Mackenzie Clark, obviously the table setter up top, but yesterday, Kami Pereira with a fantastic two RBI double, a run scored. She kind of can do it all. Does it all. No surprise, the leadoff hitter. So we're going to see a lot of production in that leadoff spot, and especially with the Clemson team, not a whole lot of experience to work off of in terms of selecting who your lineup is going to be. You know that leadoff has been showing out in practice, and they're going to do the same in games. 
Madison McPherson, the left-hander, will get the start today. She's already had two starts. McPherson will look to kind of, uh, you know, spell Nelliman. Nelliman pitched last night and obviously has pitched a, a lot this past weekend, but the Jackets looking to get something out of their lefty here today. Sent right back up the middle, and Clark will get it started. Speed already on the base pass for Clemson. As we saw yesterday, Clark turned a single into essentially a double a couple times yesterday, but right here, just a you great job. love to see just a really tight, compact swing, aggressive on that first pitch. As a leadoff hitter, if you know they're going to come ahead with the strike, why not just go ahead and come out swinging? And, and we, again, we're going to see production from this kid probably going to be stealing in these first couple of pitches. So here comes Matamore to the plate. Tigers with an early base runner. And there goes Clark. Throw down. It's skipped. Not in time. So Clark already making her presence felt on the base pass. Already turning a single into a double. So we see an outside pitch. A little bit difficult to work with. Not a bad throw, but still Clark just sneaking right in there. Just... Saleo caught that one. Good job by Saleo to keep it in front of her as Definitely well. Definitely a, a short bounce, so difficult to lay a good tag on, but good throw, too. Yeah. So runner at second now, 1-1 one, one count to Matamore. Here's a stat that I think is particularly impressive for McPherson early in her season. So she's got nine innings pitched so far. So it's bunted right side. Madmore trying to give herself up as Clark advances to third. And a nice sacrifice, but As we take a look at the defensive alignment with Clark now at third. This is how Georgia Tech will align themselves defensively. Stanford, Cowden, Huckabee from left to right. Black, Saleo, Zeitler, and Awald. And then the battery is McPherson and Kauf. Cowden back in center field starting again today. Starting again, kind of like we talked about, came out hot in the first weekend and then struggled a little bit against a very competitive Florida State team. But we see her not only making her way back into the top of the lineup, but then also in prime time center field. So it's clear that her confidence is back and Coach Field's the same way to put her back out there. It's fouled off to the left side. Yeah, so McPherson has nine innings pitched so far on the season. Three batted or three base on balls, three walks, three walks and nine innings pitched. So what you're going to see from her is competition, right? She's going to force hitters to put the ball in play, force the defense to make plays get outs. So it's golf left field might get over the head. It does. It'll rattle up against the wall. Clark will come in to score. Nice job of cutting that one off and getting it before it could be a double, but the Tigers Smoked. take advantage. A beautiful, beautiful hit with runner in scoring position over the head of the left fielder. We'll see a replay here. Nice swing, goes down and gets this pitch and takes it opposite field. So with a low ball like that, you know she's using the power of her legs and was able to drive this into left field. Now keeping it though, uh, nice job by Stanford out in left field, playing the ball off the wall. You can tell she's on her home field because she knew exactly where it was going to bounce off and managed to keep it to a single. Yeah, good job by Stanford, obviously playing that one off the wall. Right. Holds it to a single, like you said. But you go back to that swing. I love how they just stayed inside the ball. Yeah. I mean, just a fantastic job. Didn't try to do too much with it, stayed inside of it. And more often than not, you'll be rewarded. Yeah, well, especially with McPherson, she's going to pound the lower half of the zone. Um, so when you go down and get, you get that pitch and you're able to just drive like sheer power. It's one of the fun things about watching players and the way that the softball swings have developed over time is that you know, in traditional in years past, um, a lot of softball swings were a lot choppier, right? Working low to, or high to low, working down on the ball out of fear of the rise ball. And we've seen hitting coaches go into a more traditional baseball swing. So a lot more power from the bottom up. As Marissa Gambarda will take the plate here. Just one out in the inning. Gambarda was a preseason all ACC selection. Had some high honors transfer from Furman. She hits us and fly to center field, ranging back, looking up and into the trees. Gambarda makes her presence felt. I was just about Absolutely. to say what she can do with the bat. Absolutely. And right off the bat, you knew that it was a base hit, but man, did she send this straight away center field. 
we see we knew we were going to see power from her. We've seen power from her so far this season, and to no surprise. With a runner on base production early for this Clemson team. And so we see this replay. Watches McPherson just leaves it in dead center middle of the plate. Nice job once again of staying inside the ball. And when you do that to a great hitter like her, it's 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 gonna you're gonna pay for it. Absolutely. Well, you know, we saw this. We saw this from Clark too. This Clemson team is coming out aggressive. So they aren't looking for, for hittable pitches, regardless of the count. And we know they're gonna capitalize on their opportunities. Tigers have pushed across three here in the bottom of the first. There's a pop out, a quick one at that. It was two out, so nice job for McPherson. You give up the long ball, then you get right back in the circle and get an out immediately. Right back in it, definitely jammed her up, foul territory. Awald making quick, easy work of that easy out. McPherson will go back to work. Bunt attempt fielded by McPherson and the throw to first. So she gives up the long ball, but two quick outs get the Jackets out of the inning. Clemson puts up a crooked number. It's three to nothing as we head to the top of the second. We're back here at the top of the second inning. Clemson leads it three to nothing. And we take a look at Eileen Morales, the head coach of Georgia Tech. She went down in the dugout. She went down. She went down. But you talked about Morales trying to rebuild this Tech team, and obviously you have to do it in a conference that boasts the 2019 national champions. They already played them this year already. This is a tough conference to try to rebuild a team in. Tough conference to try to rebuild a team in, and especially we see the ACC growing so much with the addition of the Duke program. Now we have the addition of the Clemson program. And and we're going to see we're see Morales come back Right? So, grew up here. Started her career at Tech, was a phenomenal player, Hall of Famer for Georgia Tech. Stuck around, was a graduate assistant, then was an assistant coach here. Um, went up and was successful at, at Young Harris and Radford, and then back to rebuild the Georgia Tech program. And we're glad to have her back. We had a defensive substitution, there Kai Keller. Yeah, now she's come out. She's <laughs> come out, like I said, her fourth season. We'll say fourth season in the office. Third yeah. season on the field. How yeah. about that? That works? Something like that. It's going to be tough. I'm going to have a hard time <laughs> with that one, as we all do, right? As Mallory Black, the freshman from coming. We talked about the left side. It was kind of in some of the meetings leading up to this game, the left side of this Georgia Tech defense. And you'll see Mallory Black. You'll see Jen Saleo as well. Two freshmen that have earned some, some keep and some playing time. Definitely. We've seen several freshmen from this team come out and make a notable – a, a notable uh, impression on all of us, but but man, come in, take the the shortstop and the third baseman spot, and also be productive in the lineup is impressive. And and Black with a like we talked about that double off the wall yesterday was was something else. Opposite field, good hitter in the box. Yeah. 3-2 gets her looking good pitch there. Might have fooled her. Was probably looking for something else for the first out of the inning. She look again at this one. I mean, she just, I mean, it just paints the corner right there. Not too much you can do with it. Not too much you can do with it. And Spencer is going to come in hot after struggling a little bit in the last inning. You get a look at head coach John Rittman. Now, he's only in his second season as, at Clemson starting this program, but he's kind of a legend in the college softball and also Team USA rinks. A legend with a, that kind of Team USA experience, that means that, that Rittman has experience winning, right? And that's important because a winning culture, cre it creating, facilitating a winning culture, winning mechanics, a winning mindset, it's one thing to be competitive and it's one thing to to battle and, and come back from losses, but experiencing being successful and then maintaining that no matter what. So as you're working through developing your program and you're going to have losses, you're going to have hardships, but knowing that you're going to get back up to that winning spot and then maintain it, um, something to come, that's hard to come by, right? That's hard to come by, especially in a sport like softball where you have so many uh, just – Impressive coaches, and then to pick this one for, to start this Clemson program, it's going to be something special. And especially in a part of the country. I mean, there's so many. We were talking about beforehand, so many great programs as Bailey Zeitler is in the box facing a 2-2 count. 
you, t- you bring someone to Clemson who already kind of has a brand name as an athletic as well, start a softball program, and then as a recruit, you're like, oh, they have a high-profile coach as well. It's a place to want to go. This one's lifted into right field. That'll get down, bobbled out there. Zeitler will take two. And there's maybe a spark that the Jackets needed with a one-out double. Yeah, nice opposite field line drive from Zeitler, keeping it super simple in the box. You see her take this this away pitch, and she's driving it away, and that's almost to the chalk of the other batter's box, but she sticks with it, line drive up the right side, and then a bobble from the right fielder, like we were talking about earlier, a very aggressive on the base paths, yellow jacket offense, uh, headed off by Morales. And that's going to be the key difference maker for this Yellow Jackets team. Saleo down, lays down a beautiful bunt just down the right side. It'll be a bunt single right there. Might have been trying to give herself up. She'll take the bag. Yeah, so Saleo, we see her do this. She's going to mix in this bunt. She's going to mix it in in sacrifice situations, but we're going to see her turn these into base hits. And now you have, you have Saleo to close, turn over the lineup to Kalf. So production from the bottom, which is going to turn into base hits and runs scored from the top. Almost like a second leadoff hitter in that nine hole. Yeah, you know, I like her in nine. We talked about this. I've heard the other people covering the tech games talk about this. She's not a bad pick for number nine. So flip the lineup card back over and Emma Kalf have her second plate appearance. One for one, she led off the ball game with a single. Once again, the Jackets find themselves with another run scoring opportunity. Comes inside. See how Spencer makes adjustments from last inning to this inning now with runners on the bases. And we see her now with a little bit of pressure on starting to drift inside again. So last inning we saw her with a couple hit by pitches. Now we see her falling behind a calf, not the hitter that you want to fall behind in the count on with runner in scoring position. Jackets were just one of 10 yesterday with runners in the scoring position looking to improve on that today. That's a tough way to be one in 10. <laughs> a couple more of those might have been a different ball game. Calf skies this one to right field, ranging back towards the wall, just shy of it. This will probably get a run in. It will. Saleo moves up to second. So, hey, that gets I mean, a run in, gets him on the board. And we, that was in the air for a long time. So we saw her get a hold of this ball. And what I love about this is pull side, fly ball to the warning track. So not only does that mean that Zeitler is tagging with a giveaway run to score, but Saleo is also tagging at first base and able to advance into scoring position, even though she's on the same side of the field, right? She's quick enough, heads up enough. She sees the, the right, the key here is when the right fielder turns around and goes back on a pop fly as a base runner, that's when you want to tag every time. Heads up base running from Saleo. Kennedy Calden will step back into the box. That ball hung up for a long time. It, oh. looked like, it looked like Gumbardo went back to the wall, found where the wall was, yeah. and then maybe took a step up to and haul that one in. Adjusted to the spin a little bit. Shows bun. It's a strike called. Love to see Cowden mix in some small ball. She's already displayed power. Definitely earned herself a reputation of power with three home runs already in her freshman year. But near the top of the lineup, not a not a huge surprise that we're going to see her mix in small ball. Cowden in that two hole today. Trying to get it to those RBI manufacturers at three, four, and five. Another good hitter's count here for the Jackets. They're setting themselves up well. It's a lot, it's a lot easier to get some opportunities to hit the ball when you are in a three, one, or two, one count. Well, definitely, and that's because you're gotta get strikes. So it's flied left field. Cagle will stop and haul that one in. So the Jackets do push across to one. It's three to one as we head to the bottom half of the second inning. You join us back here in Midtown Atlanta. Jackets and the Tigers facing off. The first of two today. 
We have a new pitcher in the circle for Georgia Tech, Morgan Bruce, the senior. Originally transferred from Ole Miss. Now she's kind of established herself in the Jackets rotation. Yeah, and coming back for an additional season after having her senior season cut short due to COVID. I think I heard Haley Downs even mention that she had a job opportunity, right? Due to graduate and uh, back on the flats. Back on the flats for a victory lap. I'll tell you one thing, that's that's passion for the game. Yeah. And no one's going to question that Morgan Bruce loves you. Look at her stat line right there. Bruce coming in after two innings of work from McPherson. 13 Ks. In 14 innings. In 14 innings pitch. That's not a bad way to be. She settles into the circle. First pitch will run too far inside. And Gilstrap didn't even get a chance to say Gilstrap's name before she has to head down to first base. Definitely going right at the hitters today. <laughs> both both sides. And, and yeah. we talked about, you know, the, the young staff of Clemson, and there's a lot of, you know, young faces, and even a veteran face like this, you know, you're trying to establish the inner part of the plate. You want to establish that because you don't want to be scared to go inside on these hitters. Definitely. You don't want to be scared to go inside, high inside too, right at their hands. That would happen to go off the hip, but I'd like to see her going hard and in. JoJo Hyatt, the freshman from Buford. I think they talked about this earlier in yesterday's broadcast, but all you need to know about JoJo Hyatt, she's a freshman from Buford's program. And I know you're from the Atlanta area. You're familiar with how Buford just Absolutely. cranks out the factory over there as Hyatt will reach the athlete the factory. Buford High School, well known all across their athletic spheres. You're looking once again, trying to go inside. This one trying to go inside low. right off the shin. Might have caught the top of the nope, definitely high shin, outside knee for a free base. I don't know what's in the water in Atlanta here today, but I don't have the official number. I think that's four, maybe five hit batsmen. Runners take off and they deke like they're going, but nothing. So two early base runners here in the bottom of the second for Clemson. They're looking to add after picking up that three spot in the first. And Sam, the Tigers are testing, it feels like, very early here on the base pass. We've already seen a couple stolen base opportunities. You see them deking. To you, is that more attributed to, you know, a, a freshman back there or a, a younger presence in Emma Kalf? I know she kind of that super freshman status we for you. See, yeah, so we see a lot of motion. We've seen a lot of motion all weekend. We saw Florida State, you know, a very experienced program, but especially aggressive on the base pass. There's a lot of talk about this whole, you know, one knee, catching the ball, how she frames, what her, how she works, Kalf behind the plate. She is a freshman, right? So potentially not going to be as quick and, and aggressive and confident when she's throwing around to the different bases. So probably would not shock me if her scouting report said run all day long. Shows Bunatep. Jaden Cheek is checked in as a pinch runner, part of that top tier recruiting class that Clemson hauled in this past offseason. Ball and two strikes here to Begum. Top 10, definitely, uh, so she's the number 57 prospect in the country. It's pretty good. I mean, top when you're hauling tier. in, I mean, top tier. Top tier. I mean, we're talking about, you know, Clemson, this young team, you bring in a, a, a coach who has won at many different levels, mm -hmm. all the way to the national level. I mean, it's just, it's it breeds success, and Clemson right now is setting a very, a very exciting foundation. This one's hit out to right field. Huckabee has it. Tagging from second to third. She'll be there safely. So now runners at the corners here with one gun. Love to see a freshman with a runner in scoring position. Taking that ball. Driving it into right field. And Huckabee really didn't have a shot on the runner going to third. So nice work to, to go ahead and cut off at two. Keep... Keep a runner on first base. Now we have first and third with one out, so we'll see now what Clemson's first and third approach is. It's always exciting to see 
how teams handle the notorious first and third situation. I'll raise you one here, Sam. This Mackenzie Clark ropes this one foul. Not afraid to swing the bat. She was the number 19 prospect in the country. So I mean, you're talking about top tier talent. Clark has already made her presence felt through her first couple of ball games. Presence felt just quick, right? Dangerous. There's, it's, so as a player, right, when you're preparing for a game like this and you're, you're early in the season, you're going into a week of practice to prep for an ACC series and you're looking at the scouting report. Throw down to second, they'll get the out there. No advance from Gilstrap from third to home. So nice heads up defensive play, two gone. We'll take another look here. So knew the runner was going. Kauf, nice job, even though she stands all the way up. So that's one of the things that differentiates some catchers from others and whether or not they're successful with with speed on the bases is how they throw down. So she comes up off to her feet, but manages to get the throw down to two in time. Ground ball up the middle. Throw over to first, and the Jackets get out of the jam. So some nice defense gets them out. The Jackets will be due up when we come back at the top of the third. We're back here in the top of the third in Midtown Atlanta. The Mew Clemson leads it 3-1 to one over Georgia Tech. Like we said, the first of two. And right now, both teams have had opportunities. Four runs have been pushed across here through the game's first two innings. But I feel like there's, there's some opportunities out there, Sam, for both teams that they wish they would have had back. Definitely. So it's going to see both of these teams getting comfortable working through some of the some of the quirks, right? Some of the thing identifying early things that they need to be working on throughout the season in order to improve. Um, and we've seen adjustments made from game to game from both teams. Primarily, this Georgia Tech team is much more productive offensively than we saw them yesterday. Spencer's. First pitch catches the outside corner. Cameron Stanford will step back in for the second time today. Oh, for one. Jackets pushed across one in the bottom of the, or the top of the second. If you're Georgia Tech, you feel like if your defense can hold like they did in the bottom half of the inning and you just inch your way back, that's, you know, you got plenty of time to work with that. Catch yes. Inside corner. Yes, but. Uh, looking at a stat line from Clemson. Clemson, on average so far this season, continues to score more. More of their runs are scored in the later portion of the game than the earlier portion of the game. So this is a team, no rest for the weary, right, against this Clemson team. So if you, you want to talk about trying to be productive and stay productive, that's definitely Clemson's MO so far in this season. That's what we talked about. It's so important for the Jackets to start off hot. Stanford sends this one right back where it came from up the middle. So leadoff base runner on here for Georgia Tech in their half of the third. She'll get the approval of her bench on that one. Definitely the approval of the bench. And with Stanford, a junior, an experienced Georgia Tech hitter coming in. Second time through the lineup to start things off for her team. So Stanford stands at first. It's the first pitch to Trisha Awald, the first baseman. She was hit by a pitch her last time, but was stranded in that first inning. I go further outside, nothing biting there, one and one. The Jackets with that leadoff runner as Awald watches this one in for a strike. Two of the first three innings they've gotten it on. Yesterday, 0 of 7. All seven innings they didn't. So that, that's already trending in the right direction. Yeah, that's definitely the type of adjustments you want to make because starting out at a deficit in the inning with an out, nobody on, makes it really difficult to work your situational hitting, right? When we talk about situational hitting, what we mean is Runner on base, bunting people over, advancing runners so that you can then hit them in. And when you 
consistently don't get your leadoff on, you start off at a deficit with an out, even if you do work a hitter on base, you're not able to use your arsenal of tools or your situational hitting to your advantage as much, and you're having to rely on the success of your hitters with multiple base hits. Evo Shield getting their money's worth today, twice oh. in the elbow pad. You can't pay for a marketing package this good. You see right there, they try to go up and in one more time. And, and she's a hitter in AWOL. You don't want her to get her hands extended, so you understand where they're trying to work up and in. Definitely trying to, to jam AWOL up. Just a little too much, though. Maybe just maybe a little too on the, on the inside corner of the plate. Yeah. She's starting to feel it now. Back-to-back -back plate appearances for AWOL. Be a stinger right there on the elbow, but the Jackets are in business here. First and second, nobody out. Despite how beautiful the weather is, we see a lot of players in sleeves, which gives you the indication that it's still a little bit chilly. And man, a ball off the elbow, shield or no shield, that doesn't feel good for anybody. His game time tip was in between that 50 to 55 range, so a lot better than we saw last week. But still, still chilly. We always used to joke, though because um, Newborn Field is notorious for being just this bubble of heat, right? So even if, even if weather on campus was like sunny, 65, beautiful, you were, you were sweating once you made it to the field. I don't know if it's because of the way the sun comes in and you're in the city, but uh, you can always count on the temperature to, on the field to be a lot, well, a lot warmer than what the thermostat says. And you're also going with the all navy blue uniforms. And we're going to attract a little more sun than normal. Yeah, maybe. Huckabee at the plate. She skies this one right field. Gambardo has it. Runner from second tagging to third. Throw off the line. A nice heads up job there from Cameron Stanford, putting herself just one more bag away from a big second run. That was a bold run, too. We saw right fielder Gambarda doesn't even have to. She goes back a little bit, but then you see her adjust in, so her her weight, her momentum is carrying her in, which as an outfielder is textbook fly ball on a on a situation with runners in scoring position, but Stanford still aggressive, making things happen for her team. So not only does she set the tone and and start work by getting on base early, but now she's put herself on in scoring position and in, on third base. Great job. Let's see. Pinch run to there for the Jack. It's going to add a little more speed on the base paths. Well, runners of the corners, not a bad idea. You get one in the gap, you feel like you might have a chance to tie it. Definitely a chance to tie it. Put yourself closer to tying it with just one out. Makes for a, a very interesting inning. I'll give you that. So a lot of strategy in play. So Morales go to her bench. Some coaching staff coming to have a little meeting in the circle. Pow wow is over. First and third, one gone. Three to one, Clemson leads it. Probably giving Spencer a little bit of a pep talk. We've talked about how she's a freshman in her freshman starting debut on the mound. And have to imagine that that meeting was, went something along the lines of, hey, you know, everything's fine. You're all right. You're doing. You're doing good. Knock down a couple of the hit by pitches, and we're in business. Big opportunity here for the freshman Caroline Davis, a freshman in this spot right here against a ACC opponent, conference game. Two runners on, and a chance to inch closer. And a big swing by Davis. Love to see in a pinch hit situation, coming in and being aggressive. Ball and two strikes to Davis. Softly hit. They're going to try to go to second. And they will indeed get the out at second. So Davis will trade places. She'll stay at first base. Runner third did not advance. So kind of some a, confusion, first and third. Still. Funny place, still first and third. Love this heads up play by third base. Go ahead and go to two. Bold. If Stewart had slid in, it's possible that she might have snuck in there in time. 
kind of surprised to see her go two there. Yeah, it's a tough throw going across your body, but hey, exactly. we talked about the veteran experience of Bigham yep. at third base. She's had to move from second to third and showed off the athleticism and also threw a strike over there two seconds. <laughs> I mean, right on the money. This one's popped up. It's going to fall. Got to get a quick throw over to first, and they will indeed. So the Tigers work themselves in and out of a jam. Couple hit by pitches, but nothing to show for it. Three to one. Back here, bottom of the third inning, Clemson leads it 3-1 to one over Georgia Tech. Sam, we talked about it earlier. Georgia Tech missed opportunities yesterday. Right now, they've left some opportunities out there. And you know the later you get into this game, you pulled the stat out. Clemson's better in the later innings. Better in later innings. Those missed opportunities are going to come back and bite you. They always do. So I'm looking at Clemson's stat line right now. And traditionally an inning, so we're in three. In three, they'd scored, so right now on the season, they've scored nine runs in the third inning. In the fifth inning, ten runs, right? So gradually they're increasing the number of runs scored in later innings. And don't want to speak that into existence necessarily for one side or the other, but it's the missed opportunities that are going to be the thing that when you look back, Having runners in scoring position in less than two outs hurts. Jackets have been unable to capitalize. Just one run they pushed across with multiple opportunities. As we get the first look at Kaya Keller, who came in as defensive replacement. First baseman from Hollywood, Alabama. Another one of those super freshmen. Veteran freshman. Veteran. I like that. I there like veteran go. freshman. Go ahead and get it trademarked. I'm sure we'll have to use it again at some point. <laughs> As Bruce fires across a strike, two balls and a strike. Keller appeared five times last season. So limited experience for the Alabama native. I guess super freshman might be inaccurate, though, because... So we have, what's so funny about this season? You gotta right? categorize everything. Yeah, there has to be some sort of sliding scale, right? Because you have your freshmen, then you have your redshirt freshmen. So, so Keller is a quote unquote redshirt freshman, right? And then do you factor in COVID? I don't know. I don't know how it works. Her experience speaks for itself, though. Look at her trotting down, earning a leadoff walk. Another leadoff base runner for Clemson. Number 72, Valerie Kegel. And here's Kegel. So Kegel, a dynamic performance in the circle yesterday, playing left field, hitting in the three hole for Clemson this afternoon. Talk about athleticism. A pitcher who hits and plays the field. And does it well. I mean, yeah. you're talking about someone who went the distance yesterday and then comes out and has already put herself and helped her team get into, you know, more advantageous situations. I just love that she's an outfielder. You're kind of fond of the outfield, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm a little biased. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> one and one to count to Cagle. She didn't have that single RBI on a run scored, so got on, drove one in, and then got in. It's the heart of the Clemson batting order. Three, four on deck, and five in the hole. Chopper. Probably only be able to get one. Bruce, quick throw over. Nice shot by Bruce coming off the mound and playing her position well. We have a lefty hitter. Lefty hitter that is in the outfield might be safe to assume that you're going to have speed. So nice job by Bruce. Be heads up there. So here's Marissa Gambarda. She absolutely crushed this one. Kept carrying, carrying, and sent it into the trees in right center field. A big-time shot, and right now that's the difference maker between both these teams. Absolutely. That's the thing that put this Clemson offense ahead so far in this game. And no surprise, she's in the number four hole. That kind of a swing, that'll put you there all day long. She led the ACC last season with an 8.68 slugging percentage. As this one gets away from Cal, runner will move up. So that puts Keller in scoring position even closer now at third base. And we see this pass, this ball get away. So ball in the dirt, 
probably could have been scooped up by Kalf to prevent the, the advance of the base runner. As Keller comes across to score now. And I, you have to bear with us for a second, right? So we're in the studio. We don't have the benefit of seeing the field live. And it appears that. Let's see. So that's the ball getting away. The ball got away. And it rolled up under the fence there, which then becomes a dead ball and then the runner gets to advance an additional base, so the run scored. They're Maybe. actually, actually going to point Keller back to third. I was about to say. Now, that, so that should be a dead ball. So that should be a dead ball. Runner stays on third. Now, I'm, I mean, you see it right there up under the fence. Kind of difficult for Gal to, to reach her hand under the fence and grab it. You think but it's uh, okay? So as she's standing on third, that should be a dead ball, and then the runner will st then stay at third. Um, not to be confused with the ground rule double situation, right? So in a ground rule double situation, the ball goes bounces over the outfield fence, and the runners all get to advance an additional base. That's not what happened here. This was a dead sh sh dead ball, ball out of play. So Keller will go back to third, one gone. Regardless, a pass ball. We've seen quite a few of those. We, Georgia Tech, this bullpen has a lot of down ball pitchers and those drop balls bouncing up and catching Kauf off, cutting off her ability to block them. So one, two, skies this one into foul territory. As that one just we comes up short. Huckabee with a nice slide. Debatable though, as to whether or not so it's difficult with a hitter like Gombarda, especially if she's going to give you an out like that in foul ball territory. You want to go ahead and take it, but at the same time, right, less than two outs with a runner on third base. If Huckabee catches this ball, we know that the third base runner is going to be tagging and scoring. So it's important to be on the same page as a defense and decide in advance foul ball flight or fly ball foul territory. Are you going to catch it, take the out? and sacrifice the run or do you let it drop and and see if you can go back at Gombarda ground ball left side that'll sneak through a little seeing eye single will play another run for the Tigers they go back up by three so Gombarda manufacturing the runs here early for Clemson you look right there she's got a piece of it definitely it's right in the ground that pops up definitely rolled over this one not the same swing that we saw in her last appearance but five six hole Talk about all you got to do with a drop ball pitcher is just swing hard, hit it into the ground, and, and let the ground work for you. And we see that made her very successful at that appearance. He goes back to the pass ball, allowing that base runner to advance, ends up hurting Those the jackets missed, on that one. Exactly, missed opportunities. And that was a, correct me if I'm wrong, but that might have been a leadoff walk. That started it all. Yes, Keller did walk. It was a, a five-pitch walk. As you get a look at there, Aliyah Logaleo comes in as a pinch runner. So we have a walk, a pass ball. And a single. And then a single to score the run. I'm telling you, it's the small things that yep. maybe don't show up on the box score that really make the difference. And make the difference. Aside from Gumbarda's home run, I mean, it's been the small things that have yep. kept this, the big difference in this game. Yep. Exactly. So Clemson leads four to one. Would love to add on. Sam hit on earlier. They get better and better as the game goes on. So right now, if you're Georgia Tech, you gotta you gotta stop the bleeding right here and get your offense back out there. That's exactly right. Stop the bleeding, which can be difficult when you have speed on the bases, right? When you have speed on the bases, heads up base running. Look at Leo at first. You can look right there. Hannah Goodwin, she's 0 for 1 with a runner at first and one gone here for the Tigers. Good hitters count for Goodwin. Right back. They're going to go for two. They got the first one at second and throw God. over to first. And that is some clean defense. Great job 
Bruce going back to two, getting the double play. The Jackets get out of the jam. Clemson does push one across. It's four to one. Your score. Reagan Spencer back on the mound. She holds a three-run lead as the Tigers have continued some offensive damage. Georgia Tech right now, I'm going to keep hitting it home over and over again, Sam. The Jackets need to start to put some runs up here quickly. Yeah, taking advantage of those missed opportunities. And we see Spencer in this freshman starting debut and not a tremendous amount of conversions and outs, but just missed opportunities. The runners left on base. Uh, Yellow Jackets definitely working against themselves, making quick work for Spencer to be able to kind of stay on top, stay in the game, stay competitive. It's not the lack of opportunities. Georgia Tech has had a runner in scoring position every single inning. Two of the first three, they were able to get those leadoff runners on as Bailey Zeitler watches that one outside. It's one of those things when you, when you know that's the problem, then you start to press. Right, and, and you so put, you put the pressure on yourself. Oh yeah, and, and then it becomes this self-inflicted. It feels like to the spectator, you're watching the Yellow Jackets work against themselves more than you're watching them fight against Clemson. And we see another hit by pitch. Another hit by pitch off the Evo Shield. This one might have grazed it. I mean, I think that's a that's a quick graze of the Evo Shield. Well, hey, three out of four. Three out of four. The Jackets have gotten the leadoff runner on. Let's see if they can do something with it here as Saleo comes up to the plate. A half-hearted swing checks it. Only play over to first, so that'll work as a sacrifice. Zeitler down to second. Works the same as a sacrifice, I suppose. Definitely surprised her. Not sure if she fully meant to swing or if that was a, more of like a defensive fighting off another hip by pitch swing. But regardless, we see that it gets a job done and now Zeitler is in scoring position. So here's Kalf. She's one for one with a single. Also that sacrifice fly stands as the lone run for Georgia Tech so far. But Sam, we hit on again. Another run scoring opportunity here for Georgia Tech. Run scoring opportunity, less than two outs. Top of the lineup. One misses high. And a good hitter's count here for the Jackets leadoff hitter. Skies this one a mile high up in the air. Another towering fly ball from Kauf. So we saw a towering fly ball in fair territory in her last at bat, deep right field. And now we see her fouling another one off just on the other side of the fence. Good effort here from Gilstrap. Tried to go over the wall, but just ran out of real estate. Evaded our cameraman up there as well. It's always tough. As the away team, you're at a disadvantage, right? Because you're not as familiar with the fences. You're not as familiar with the field. So we saw in the first inning um, from Cagle going for that fly ball and getting hesitating at the fence. And now we see Gilstrap. She does a nice job tracking it. Really great job, but can still be difficult to make those, you know, sports center top 10 catches in unfamiliar territory. Well, then you flip the script. Georgia Tech had one come off the wall, and they played a great defensively. So they said, knowing your own home ballpark. It can definitely help. Straight up the shoot. And a nice job there from JoJo Hyatt. She reigns that one in, and a big second out for Spencer in Clemson. So runner still standing at second base. Georgia Tech would love to get this one in before we get to the bottom of the fourth inning. Try to cut this deficit in half. It's Calvin, the junior, 0 for 2 today, steps up to the plate. Shows bunt, offers. And we talked about it a little bit. So with Calvin being a transfer in, 
right? It can be difficult to come in and have confidence with, with an established program, with an established team. And we saw her do such a nice job in her first opening weekend. So her experience definitely helped her to be successful in her first couple at bats in a yellow jacket uniform. But that can still wear off, right, as you come into your next weekend. Um, you, you still are kind of new kid on the block. So seeing her work back into the lineup might be a testament to some of her experience and the confidence and the work that she's been doing throughout the offseason. But it'll be really nice to see how she handles being back in the lineup in that yellow jacket uniform. Ropes this one to center field. It will fall. Short hop comes up firing and an absolute oh, missile from goodness. center field will hold, will hold Zeitler at third base. A cannon. What can she not do? What can she not do? So so nice job by Cowden, right? This is low and away, keeping it super simple. Base hit. And then just Clark comes up firing. So so this is this is if you want to talk about textbook form from a center fielder on a on a ground ball like that, we saw her coming in hard. She was able to read the hop, adjust, and then that footwork to just fire it in through her cutoff as the as the pitcher stands in to cut off the ball, and then all the, it goes all the way to home, keeping preventing the run from scoring. Jackets two of ten with runners in scoring position. Could change their fortune in a big way here as Stanford slaps this one foul out of the way. You talked about what she can do. I mean, that is why she was one of the most prized recruits coming out of the high school ranks. I mean, <laughs> what she can do with the bat, on the base pass. She is, dare I say, she's one of those players that they talk about being a five-tool player. She's Absolutely. very good in all aspects of the game. Certainly seems like it so far. I don't think that that's and bold, young in her career. bold to say whatsoever. That is accurate. And and deserved. So Georgia Tech struggling with runners in scoring position. Three of 20 in the series. I'd love to get that fourth hit right here. Stays high two and two. Which is difficult to watch considering the weekend that they had just one short week ago where it seems like their offense was firing on all cylinders. 2-2, golf center field, Clark going back. She'll settle, shy of the warning track, and there is the third out. Clemson gets out of another jam. Georgia Tech trails by three here in Atlanta. We're back here in Atlanta. Clemson leads it 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Tigers will look to extend their lead. Some defensive replacements coming on for the Jackets. Megan Cassidy has checked into the game. As... Bailey Zeitler has moved to short, so that means Saleo is out of the game right now. So Coach Morales trying to find that winning combination, maybe in the lineup that also can help out defensively as well. Certainly. It's still very early in the season, so we're seeing a lot of things moving around. You know, it's possible that there might be injury somewhere mixed in that, you know, as the outside looking in, we don't have the benefit of always knowing the inner workings of the decision-making process. But um, Burrell is certainly trying to be competitive in this game because there's still a lot of ball game left. Hits this one soft grounder right side and nice job of fielding her position as Bruce is able to get the quick out. Yeah, and you love to see Bruce playing her position. Done it several times so far, so firing in a nice, what looks to be screwball hardened in and handling her position really well. You gotta love a pitcher that can feel their feel position their well. Position. And, and as you, you know, a former, a former center fielder, you like to have a, a pitcher that you know you, you can count on uh, they can feel the position pretty well. It changes the dynamic on the field for sure because what that means is that your corners aren't having to cover as much ground. Your catcher isn't having to cover as much ground, right? So they can be more confident, more sure in defending their position and not also have, having to cover more of the field. So it just changes the level of confidence on the field. Look at Ansley Gilstrap. She was hit by a pitch, one of... It's got to be five or six now on combined both yeah. teams that we've seen reach. We're getting HBP. dangerously close to double digits. Goes drop facing that 1-1 count. Waves and misses. Took a little off of something right there. 
So Bruce has Gilstrap off balance. With a lot of options on a 1-2 pitch coming. Swatted. Swatted. Sounded a, like maybe came off the end of her bat there. Swung hard, though. And Gilstrap, an experienced hitter, is an understatement. Yeah, she missed the whole season due to season ending and then obviously didn't play last year. So this is her first time since 2018. Something like On the diamond. As Cassidy will get her first look. Not in time as she beats it out at first base. There's a one-out rush runner. Something that's probably made Gilstrap so successful is that speed that she has out of the box, her ability to use the ground. Ball on the infield. Okay, so not use the ground, but poke one over the pitcher. So when you get jammed up like that, when you're strong enough through the core of your swing to be able to poke something over the pitcher's head and into fair territory and then leg it out. So here's Hyatt, Clemson's backstop. Looks at strike one. You're going to see that a lot today. Today, colon, hit by pitch. Hit by pitch. We've seen a couple of those as Hyatt is a, a victim of the hit by pitch. Bruce with one on and one out. Throw down to second. Ooh. Throw was a little high. Zeitler tried to Wild. pull it back down, but another stolen base. They're running, and they're yep. running with authority. Yep, running with an exclamation mark at the end of it. Um, and Zeitler does a nice job of keeping this ball in the infield, tracking it down. So even though she moved across to shortstop, she's versatile enough that she makes it look easy from no matter what position she's at. But almost looked like she laid the tag in there on her foot. So another... Runner in scoring position for Clemson. Hyatt awaits the one two. Just misses inside. And almost an errant throw, an unforced error there from Kalf behind the plate. Definitely not a bad pitch for the one-two count. Bruce is staying around the zone. Two-two pitch, here it comes. This one swatted right field. Ranging back is Huckabee. She gathers, runner tags. And a good throw on the mark, but just a tad bit late. Definitely tough. We see this ball carry Huckabee back just enough. And Gilstrap tagging. So you see Huckabee's momentum was carrying her back. Gilstrap saw it, tagged, and then slid in and lost her balance and almost got tagged out. You saw the umpire kind of double take for a second to decide. It, was, it wasn't even the initial swipe of the tag. It nope. was that It was that, that, that falter that she had when she stood up. So Clemson... Just a short ways away from that fifth run, which will be a pivotal one, heading here into later innings. So catches the inside corner, one and one. Casey Bigham, just an all-around fantastic athlete. We've seen her make some great plays in the field. Now a chance to use her bat and put Clemson up even head further. High two and one. Tough situation here, Sam, for Bruce, because you don't want to give a good hitter and big him something to hit, but you also know that you are the type of pitcher that pitches to contact and wants your defense to work for you. Definitely, and the, the good news is that there are two strikes, so it has to give you a level of confidence as a pitcher to know that as long as I force a fieldable ground ball, I've done my job, right? And that's all I can do at this point, so not the worst position to be in. You're betting 333 with runners in scoring position. 
and a hitter-friendly count. She'll take first base via the free pass. So at least for Georgia Tech here, you have the force out in play. As we flip the lineup card over, but the bad news for the Jackets is you have one of the most exciting players <laughs> on the field, in the stadium, and probably in the conference as Mackenzie Clark will stride up to the plate. I got my notes here in front of me, and, you know, it's it's two-toned. It's got Mackenzie Clark, her information, all this stuff, but there is stuff just beyond this piece of paper that make her just a fantastic player as Clark watches that one outside. A difference maker is definitely the way that I would describe Clark, and it is going to be a treat to be able to watch her develop throughout her career because there can be generations of ball players that move through conferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we're looking at one. We, there can be generations, and, and there are definitely notable ball players. Don't get me wrong. There have been plenty in the ACC that have, I mean, Florida State has, have, has won it all. They have, con they have national titles. So we know that there are very talented players in this conference. What's fun about this is this is a brand new program, right? So, Clark, you are setting the tone for an impressive and challenging record book. We'll put it that way. And we talked about the veteran presence. To have that and then have a young star in the making like yes. Clark is just exciting for the Clemson faithful. Check swing. Got it her. was called strike Got inside her. corner. So Bruce gets out of the gym and gets a big time out as we head to the top of the fifth. The Jackets are trying to get back in this one. It's four to one. We're back here in Atlanta where Clemson holds the lead over Georgia Tech. The first of two, four to one here in the top of the fifth as the Jackets will send their offense out once again. I'm going to keep hitting on it, Sam. You brought up the stats. Ten runs Clemson has scored in the fifth inning since the start of the season, this young season. Yep. They make their money, we'll say, later on in the game. Georgia Tech's got to change that narrative and try to put in some runs here. Absolutely. So that's what's so fun about this sport, right? When you so we've seen we've seen this sport develop so much in the past thirty years. Whereas in the in the Jenny Finch era, where you had a dynamite pitcher who led the team, who pitched every game for the entire four years of their career, and it was very much a low-scoring pitcher's game. And then we saw years ago, back in the I think it was the '80s, when they established the rule that moved the mound back three feet. And then we've seen the ball change a little bit to meet more aerodynamic, if you will. I'm not sure exactly what language they use. but uh, And then, so, because of those changes, that's made it a easier, not easier, but a much more conducive for hitters to be successful. And so then, with those changes, now we've seen several generations of ball players pass through. This one sky to center field, ranging back and into the trees. That's the exclamation point they needed yeah. as the Jackets get on the board here. And making my exact point for me, right? Like, you're not seeing these. You're, you have successful pitchers, but what you have now is hitters who have studied the game, who have crafted who have crafted a methodology that enables them to be successful. Look at this swing. I mean, Awald, she even arguably gets a little bit jammed up. It's not the best swing I've seen her put together, but her power, right? Her power, her swing, her mechanics take over, and she sends this to straightaway center field, which at the Mew is 220, and that is... Some serious distance, and that distance. was well beyond. And that was beyond. That was the trees for sure. So what this means is... You are going to have exciting, high-scoring, hitting games where you're going to see a team come out and score, and then the other team's going to answer. And it's going to be much less about having an all-star pitcher that carries your team and much more about having a bullpen pitching by committee, right? Being able to strategically use when you make pitching changes to throw off the hitters, right? It's all, it's becoming all about the hitter, um, which is fun to watch, right? It's a treat for all of us here at home, at least. Yeah, be able to watch the game, the way it's evolved over the past 
like you said, 20, 30 years. It's yeah. taken such big strides. And the strategy, we've already seen defensive substitutions, pinch runners, pinch hitters. Coaches are more, you know, they want their bench to be just as good as that starting nine. So it's very important to see what they can roll out there to kind of have a very complete program and team. Oh, and I, I love that point because my freshman year, uh, Katie Johnski was her name at the time, and she was the right fielder when I was a freshman. And I practiced in right field with her. This one sky to right field. Wind will blow it back in for out number one. And um, still kind of getting used to it. It was very new. It was high pressure to be on the field on, at the collegiate level for the first time, right? Nerves were high. She pulled me aside. She said, Sam, I can only be as good as you push me to be in practice, right? So we're competing for the same position. And that can be a little bit awkward. And um, she said, I can only get better if you come out and you push me to get better and you try to take my spot. And I think that that's something that's really powerful that is a testament to the cultures that you're going to see on the fields is that it's not, you know, if you beat me out for my spot on the field, that's not because, you know, we're competing and now I don't like you. That's you pushing to make the team better. And now every player in the, on the bench that is capable, we almost just saw a terrible accident. Yeah, that's going to get on not, that's going to Sports Center not top 10 right there. That was, uh, that was almost very, very bad. We're going to get a replay of this one. You see, Logaleo runs out of real estate and a fan lost his footing on the sidewalk. Man, great job by oh, our crew here yeah, in-house in to every angle to throw that one. That one's going to be on social media somewhere S later on this evening. Somewhere. All smiles. And thank goodness for that, right? Pokes this one right field. Just foul. That would have had two bases written all over it for Davis. Davis is not taking the outside corner of the plate lightly. So we see Spencer consistently working away. Maybe that's a function of the number of hit by pitches that we've seen, change in strategy. And Davis is certainly prepared to, to work away with that outside pitch. Jackets cut the deficit in half on a long ball from Awald, looking for more. Davis in her second plate appearance. And what's crazy about this game, Clemson with four runs, they're actually behind in hits, only five hits. On the other hand, Georgia Tech, two runs on six hits. But the key stat that you'll see in the box score, eight runners left on base for Georgia Tech compared to three for Clemson. Clemson's converted and executed, and Georgia Tech's kind of lacking. But, hey, you're still in the game only down by two runs. There's a lot to unpack there, right? That's... Certainly not something that you're going to look forward to talking about. Uh, That's not a good post-game conversation no, in the locker room or dugout. Gonna, when you show up to the practice, like come come Tuesday, uh, and you're up in the press but or you're up in the film room and you're talking about the number of runners in scoring position, that's going to be a little tense. But um, there's a lot there, right? We saw, we saw the Yellow Jackets be super productive last weekend, so we know that there's potential there. And so then it's just a function of you're still early enough in the season that you have runners on. That can, that's part, that's half the that's, battle. That's, yeah, that's half the battle. This one's this little seeing eye single, little one out magic for the Jackets as Davis with a impressive at bat there to an get on base. An impressive at bat. I love this because we see Davis working away, hitting the ball, making contact well. And so looks like an outside pitch, and she gets her hands around the ball and struck it hard into the ground into that 5-6 hole. We see her mouth be aggressive. I think everyone at home knows what she said, <laughs> that one. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. And I... Yeah, so Roper was going to re-enter the game, so she'll probably be back... She was in the DP spot. So she'll re-enter, and if the Jackets have another at bat, then it'll be interesting to see if Roper continues to hit or if they then put in another pinch hitter, not super sure. 
Both teams are scratching out the lineup card, and the umpires having a busy day as well. <laughs> and, it, and that goes back to what you talked about, yep. Sam. I mean, you just talked about, you know, 20, 30 years ago was you send a pitcher out there, and she's pitching the whole seven innings or six innings, and maybe you throw somebody else out. Yep. Now you're having defensive substitutions. Analytics comes into all of yep. this. A launch angle, everything that comes in as Clemson looks like they are going to sub in a new pitcher. We're going to take a break here from Atlanta where the Jackets are threatening. They we're back here in Atlanta where Clemson has gone to the bullpen. Millie Thompson, the left-hander from Virginia, the freshman, will come on in a pressure situation as the Jackets are looking to claw their way back in it, tying run at the plate. Good pitch there, catches the inside corner. That's one way to establish dominance in the inside corner right there from Thompson. Should get a look. Sam said Roper's checked back in as the pinch runner. That one stays low. It'll definitely be a little bit of an adjustment to make from going from a, a, the look of a righty to now a lefty. Nice pitch there from Thompson. A ball and two strikes. Which is... So it's a super interesting concept to talk about because a lot of times what dictates whether or not a hitter is right-handed or left-handed is not what dominant hand you have, but which eye is dominant. Well, that was a dominant pitching that bat right there from Thompson. She had him, uh, I would say she had a little confused. Off speed, off speed, fed her with some different stuff and just kind of off balance that entire at bat. It's definitely an interesting look out of the hand. It'll be interesting to see how Zeitler now handles this pitching change. Two gone, runner at first. Right, so, so your dominant eye is the eye that you see predominantly out of. Mm. And that is the best way that I can describe it. You're, you're talking <laughs> a to a great definition. A, you're talking to a businesswoman. I am in no way, shape, or form a physician you're not an, or doctor. An optometrist, is that what it's yeah, called? I did not take anatomy, but there you go. um but I, I do know that you're either left eye dominant or you're right eye dominant. Right. One of those is closer to the pitcher. So for a lot of righty hitters, your left eye is your dominant eye. That's the one that you see better out of. Um, if you're naturally right handed, a lot of times you're naturally left eye dominant. When you have hitters that switch over to the left side, especially in softball, you have a lot of slappers who are naturally right handed, but they switch over to the left to slap, add a little bit more of a triple threat to their game. They're still left eye dominant, so they're less dominant eye is the one that's facing is the one that's lead, kind of they're seeing eye for hitting which can be a really strong disadvantage when you're facing a lefty pitcher because the ball comes out on the the side of her body that it's more difficult for you to see so that's why that lefty lefty matchup is is something that's talked about is it's harder for you to see the ball from the left side against a lefty pitcher it's not the same with a ready ready matchup Right, so there's, I just threw some science at you. You're uh, throwing science. I mean, yeah. you said you didn't major in anatomy, but now you got the scientific but of I got science the, of softball. I got the softball part down. You, you know, if you went back and you looked at my stat lineup against lefty pitchers, then I would be able to say, "There's your proof right there." Um, it's hard, but it's grounded left side, just foul. But then when you have a pitcher like Thompson, who his wind up is now much visibly different than what we've seen so far in the game. That just completely changes the look that you have. Full count to Zeitler with a runner at first. Swinging and a miss. Brought a little something extra on that one. And Thompson comes in and promptly strikes the two batters out that she faces. Clemson still leads it as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. We're back here in the bottom of the fifth here in Midtown Land on the campus of Georgia Tech where Clemson leads it 4-2. to two. Sam, we've talked about it. We'll hit on it again. But obviously Clemson doing a good job of executing. Right now, if you're Morgan Bruce, you've got to keep this Clemson offense at bay. 
keep them at bay when we know that they perform at their peak so far this season in the fifth inning and later in the game. So we've been hyping it up the whole game. We, I mean, we've we from like the second inning on. Sam has we got her iPad right it, here, right? and she's been saying she's excited about the stat. And, and so right here, if Clemson, they, they they better not let us down. It's one of those things, you know. You got it. You, when you anticipate, it, this is very much a. We, we spoke about last inning how it's much more a hitter's game than it has been in decades past. So there's going to be a lot more production throughout the entire game, which keeps it interesting. But then stats speak for themselves. It'll be curious. We're all curious to see what happens this inning. First baseman Keller will be the first batter of the bottom of the fifth as that one skips up to the plate. Not to mention where we are in the in the Clemson lineup. Two, three, four. You got to be careful. I mean, you really got to be careful this part of the lineup. You don't want to get too cute with it. But you, I mean, you got to you got to make some good pitches. Low and inside, two and zero. Oh. Two runs on seven hits, no errors for Georgia Tech. Four runs on five hits, no errors. We talked about Clemson's losing in the hit column, but winning where it matters due to some unforced errors that might not show up in the box score in the newspaper the next day. So stays low again. If I'm not mistaken, Sam, this is how the rally started last time. Keller walked on five pitches Indeed. and danger of being walked on four right here. Indeed, she walked. And we had a pass ball that advanced her from... I think she uh, it was a fielder's choice yep. and, then a, and yep. then a pass ball, and she was at third and then almost came home on a ball yep. rolling under the rolling fence. Rolling under the fence. But instead an RBI single. So Bruce got to bear down here. You got to make a good pitch. See if Keller offers it anything. Right down the middle. Strike one. I think Keller probably has the red light on that one. Three and zero, a freshman. I mean, if you, if you earned your keep, the coach could say, yeah, you can have your green light, but, uh, you know, and that's no knock against Keller. She may be a great player. This one's squibbed right back to the pitcher's mound where Bruce hauls it in for out number one. Did you ever have the green light on 3-0? and So it's one of those things that, like, I'm pretty sure they never came out and explicitly said, you aren't allowed to swing at a 3-0 pitch. However... It was. There were a couple of instances where we had teammates that swung at a 3-0 pitch and got out and, like, talk about awkward. <laughs> Cagle sends this one over to short for out number two. It's an awkward situation. Dugout gets real quiet. Hey, real quiet, kind of look especially because like, it's a rally killer. Yeah. I mean, you got to, in a situation, you know, if it was on the other hand for Georgia Tech here, I mean, to me, in this situation, you're not swinging 3-0. You're down by two runs. You need a base runner any way you can get it. There's a lot of different schools of thought. The <laughs> aggressive side of me wants to say, if you got it, if your confidence is there, if your swing is good, let her rip, right? Like, we hit a dinger. Hit a, hit a single up the middle for, for all I care. But uh, you better do something. You better do something. You better do something. Speaking of home runs and singles, here's Gambarda. Nice little nice little loop in right. You knew what you were doing with that one. Yep. As Gambarda, she's blasted one to right center field and had a single. She's knocked in three of the four Clemson runs. Off speed catches outside 0 and 2. Bruce trying to get a quick inning of work. Yep. We haven't seen a whole lot of off speed pitches from Bruce, so I'm not surprised to see her starting to work that into the mix, especially with how aggressive Clemson has been early in the count. 0 2. Just gets a piece of that one, sends it off foul. been meaning to say it, and I'll say it now, Gambarda in her last season at Furman had 17 home runs, which was good for first in the Southern Conference. So we've already seen her power on display throughout this weekend. We know she has that power there in the middle of the order for Clemson. Ball and two strikes to Gambarda. This one's in the dirt, another waste pitch. 
The two hits Gambart has had, they're very different. One, very she different. stayed inside the ball, sent it over the fence. The next one, she beat straight into the ground. And I was a high chopper for a base hit, so she can do a lot of things with the bat very well. Well. And another example yeah, of that right there, again. a third hit for Gambart on the afternoon. So that's just that's just mechanics. That's good mechanics. That's just a textbook swing, right? Being able to hit home runs is always impressive. But what's nice about this swing here is it, you see her getting a little bit jammed up. Her her arms are a little bit close into her body, but she's still able to use the power, get around the, this low inside pitch enough to pull it to her pull side, her power side. Um, ends up with a beautiful piece of hitting right there. So here's Hannah Goodwin with two outs and a runner on first. Preseason All-ACC mention. She's 0 for 2. She led the team in batting average last year and was second overall in the ACC in a COVID-shortened season. Around 26 games were played last year on Clemson's schedule. And you talk about Clemson's program, they had a couple high-profile wins. They knocked off Georgia, who was a top-15 team. They were able to knock off some other teams as well, building momentum to what was going to be a very, it seems like a special inaugural season for the Tigers. Special, uh, special, hyphenated, special with an asterisk next to yes. it, right? Um, certainly a buzzkill for Clemson to have their season cut short, considering, like you're saying, impressive. Um there's something really, really cool about having such a notable coach, such a historically successful all-around all athletics program. We kind of knew, right? You, you kinda, when they launched this, it's like, who's not going to want to come? Right. But good job by Bruce on that. We'll come. We'll talk about it when we come back. But Bruce is able to get a quick inning and evade the walk. Four to two, the Tigers. We're back here in Atlanta. Clemson leads it over Georgia Tech 4-2-2. The Tigers will have a defensive substitution. Ariel Oda will check into the game in left field for Clemson. She made 24 appearances last year. Nine of those were starts. And it had a nice little on-base clip, 464 and 13 at-bats. So a nice late-game substitution here for Clemson. We talked about the way the game's changing. Yep. You have some plays that come off the bench. Interestingly enough, we see a lot of times late-game outfield substitutions. And what that says to me is that we are preparing to close the book, right? We cannot afford – we don't expect a whole lot more turnover of the Clemson lineup, but we cannot afford to have a whole lot of production from the Georgia Tech offense. So got to put your, put your athletes in the outfield and make some catches. The lefty Thompson will go back to work in the circle as she faces Megan Cassidy. Now, let me get this straight. You never got – you wouldn't have never gotten subbed out, right? <laughs> never, ever. You, your, your defensive, uh, oh, your defensive metrics were off the charts. I, we, we all have our days, right? <laughs> any given day. Any given day. Any given day, any one of us can be humbled. And, man, like, like I said, put your, out, put your athletes in the grass and let's make some catches. I'm sure I was. I know I was. Well, you know, there's when, when they told me that I was working with you, you know, obviously there's the clip that everyone talks about of, of the Georgia game. You make the diving catch. Oh. It was on Sports Center Top Ten that floats around. See. So when I heard the name, I was like, oh, okay, let's let's see what she's done as not, Cassidy works a four pitch walk. Not to be that guy, but I had two. I so, had, so that one's just like the one that surfaces. There's really that's maybe the a better one. That's the one that surfaces, and I feel so validated that I get to finally bring this to light that I hate that catch. Okay. I shouldn't have dove, right? Because we had Alex Hugo, we had a runner on third, and Alex Hugo was hitting, and I should not have dove. I should have slid in so I could have popped up and tried to make the play at home. I hate that catch because a run scored, and I could have handled it better. We gotta see if the production team can get the video up there. You can break that <laughs> that's, down for us. We are at this point. That's archaic. Stuff that's that archaic. We're, we're talking about archaic film. That's pre-ACC network. Yeah. Emma Kauf back up at the plate. Another leadoff base runner here for Georgia Tech as Cassidy reaches on the four-pitch walk. We saw Thompson was dominant the two batters she faced in the latter half, but now she's gonna have to face the top of the lineup for Georgia Tech. So runner at first, 1-1, one, one, shows bunt, drops in the dirt. Cassidy will advance with no throw. So Cassidy 
heads up base running, read that ball in the dirt, and a little bit of bobble, and she's in scoring position. So Cal for the runner in scoring position, batting 414 on the season. Love something to call out here is Kalf moving her feet through the box. So we know Kalf hits for power. We've seen her hit some towering fly balls even in this game. Just missed a home run earlier. Right, right. Um, but to see her moving her feet through the box adds a level of threat that keeps the defense even that much more anticipatory, on your toes, ready for anything. And it just shakes you up enough. It makes it difficult to pitch to, difficult to defend. Anticipatory. Sam is also a wordsmith hey. over here. <laughs> the vocabulary. Kalf is going to draw the walk. So Georgia Tech's in business. One of the best opportunities they've had all game. First and second. Now I want to talk a little strategy here with you. You got first and second. You have a number two hitter. Is it too obvious or am I wrong? Would you want a button here to try to get everyone advanced? I would say... It doesn't matter how obvious it is. You have no outs. You're down by two. Now, this is the real kicker, right? Is who is in the box? Mm -hmm. And we have Cowden, who was the talk of the town last weekend, transferred in three home runs in her opening in her opening weekend. She's earned her way back into the lineup this weekend. And she does bump. What do we know? I mean, I would, I mean, seems like a gimme to me. It, it, it do was. it. it go was. ahead go and ahead. do it. Take the pressure off of Cowden. Coach goes ahead and makes the call. Right now you have two runners in scoring position and one out, and who's up to bat? Stanford. This yeah. is this is where you make your money right here. Yeah. Not that anyone's making money. I'm just saying. Well, this is where you make your money right here, or, or you earn the scholarship. Or say it this way, right? If there were ever a time to redeem yourself as a Georgia Tech offense on the number of runners left on base. Now, this is your chance. This is your chance to make that, like we talked about, debrief after weekend meeting a little less tense. If you can just go ahead and scratch a couple across. Yeah, it's always better to go into those debriefs <laughs> saying we could have fixed this, but at least we got the win. Stanford slices this one. Left side. That will be it first. One run comes in. Heads up base running by Kalf to get to third. 4-3 ball game. And now the time run what. stands at third. That's why you bunt. I, you That's what love, you were saying the whole time. Love small ball. Textbook execution. That's why you bunt. That's why you do it. doesn't matter who's at the box. As you bunt, you move that runner across. Scores a run. And then hot shot, Patricia Awald. I mean, you just saw what she did last time up. Sent one into the trees in center. She gets a hold of one here. The Jackets could have the lead. A base hit will do two for Georgia Tech. As Thompson finds herself in some trouble here. A little lefty on lefty matchup. Like we, yep. Go back to your science yeah, lesson. Yeah, lefty lefty matchup. It's tough, and it's tough for a reason now. I I want to say Awald is a true lefty, so it, it might not necessarily be as applicable for her, right? And this all up to your interpret. This could be the difference between. Oh, and to clarify for our folks at home, we do in fact have two outs, so that changes this. That does mix, change. That changes yes. this mix just a little bit, but. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how she does in her lefty-lefty matchup. Paints the outside corner. And so now Kalf stands at third, runner it. Just so close. This is probably the best opportunity Georgia Tech's had to tie the game all afternoon. 2-2 Two -two pitch. A long look at that one from the umpire from behind. <laughs> Half the, half the stadium was, was happy about it, and then the Clemson dugout was waiting for the arm to go up. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes, one gone, or two gone. Pivotal sixth inning. A little farther outside. It's always a hold your breath kind of a moment. And an AWOL. I don't think AWOL knew there were I three balls. I don't think she knew. 
she she wanted to hit. Yeah, she didn't want. No, listen, I mean, she was hoping that no one would walk? notice so that she could have yeah, the opportunity. She said, "I'll play with five. I'll play pitch. with five. <laughs> Give me a fifth one. We'll go." <laughs> Runners at the corners, two gone. And here comes Huckabee. Georgia Tech, like Sam said, a chance to redeem themselves offensively. Tough pitch to watch. This is the first pitch of the at-bat following a walk. That's a pivotal one, too. Ugh. I mean, as a pitcher, you want to be able to get that in for a strike. Thompson right. was successful. Goes back to it off speed. Off speed. It's a... Looks like an off-speed curve, just based off the way that it's breaking across the plate in on the righty hitter, but definitely off-speed in some capacity. If she leaves that one out over the plate, it might be hit onto the highway. This is skied a mile high on the infield, and Gilstrap is going to catch it. Georgia Tech pushes across a run. It's 4-3 to three now. Clemson. There's a look at the Atlanta skyline behind on the Georgia Tech campus. As you look at a good look, the wind is starting to pick up here, blowing in. We have a new pitcher on the mound as Palmer Penholder, Penholster, the sophomore from McDonough, in her first appearance of the season. Listen, what a spot to come in. A one-run ball game, bottom of the six. You know this is a pivotal inning right here because you got to hold them if you want to keep it at a one-run deficit. Absolutely, and when we talk about pitch by committee and how the game has evolved, this is the perfect example, right? So you've had, you've seen several different looks with McPherson and then Bruce and now Pinholster, who in this situation could be a super strong closer. Right, if we want to start pulling in terms from baseball, we don't typically talk about softball pitching by committee in terms of three. A lot of times it's it's pretty common to see two pitchers throughout the course of the game, but then now we're starting to see this concept of a closer come in and shut the door. And Holster will be tasked with holding Clemson at bay as Georgia Tech's offense will have an opportunity in the top half of the seventh. They'd love to keep it here at a one-run deficit. The McDonough native feasts this one up. High fly ball carrying out to right into the wind, and it's over the wall. Even with the wind, this ball carries. Talk about power. On her pull side, Pereira just rockets this ball over the right field fence. Well, it was a matter of time before Pereira joined the action. She had two big hits last or last time out, and today into the wind, like you said. I mean, that, that, that one it wasn't a wall scraper, but I'm telling you, I mean, that, that had a lot of pop behind it. The wind's pop, blowing out. You can see from that side angle of her swing just the power. Quick hands to contact and smashes that ball to right field. So Clemson with a massive insurance run here in the bottom of the sixth inning that sets them up well. As Ansley Gilstrap, who's single and another one of those hit by pitches we've seen far too often this afternoon. So let's see what the composure of Pinholster is right now. Get back in the circle. And you got to get three outs right here. Yeah, not exactly what we were talking about when we talked about this concept of using the closer, right? Um, you might come in and, and mix speeds a lot. You might mix planes. So we've seen Georgia Tech work the drop ball in a lot so far in this game. We haven't seen a whole lot of up pitches. Uh, definitely looks like Pinholster is going to mix in kind of like a junk ball with that off-speed pitch. But as she starts to get appearances in the season, we'll kind of see what style she brings to fill out this bullpen. Trying to earn her keep right here. This is low and inside. And I think, too, as a coach, when a, play, when a pitcher gives up a home run, you want to see what happens the next at bat. Exactly. I mean, you're going to give up a home run. It's just a part of the game. But how you react and how you um, kind of the next at bat, the next pitch is pivotal. So this is why this is a big at bat right here. That one catches the inside corner. Good pitch from Pinholster. Exactly. There. Well, and in this situation, as you're already behind by a run. So an additional run, not great. Doesn't feel great. But uh, to your point, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to pull the plug and take her out, right? We want to see how she works through it. Good pitch and a good offer at it as 
She spoils that one. Count remains full. The big fly from Pereira. It's a huge insurance run as the Jackets look for three outs. Inside corner strike three, so a good response there from Pinholster for out number one. Beautiful screwball. You watch her starting on the inside part of the plate, but what I love about this pitch is the velocity that she seems like she picked up with that strike three pitch and went hard in on her hands. Beautiful, beautiful screwball. If she gets the bat on that one. I don't know if she does much with it. This one's golf to left field. Over the head of the left fielder. Ranging in. Quick throw to second. She's going to try for two. They're going to have her Got dead her. to right. Top and a fantastic about play. About a ball off the wall. Stamford. So we, we've talked about this before. We saw her make a play like this earlier. But talked, this is where your experience in the game speaks volumes. Watch the way she pauses when she gets to the warning track, looks for the ball, and as soon as it enters into your glove, you see her momentum start to carry. She opens up her chest to make a throw, find second base, and then just excited. That's, that's a big kinda, out. That's a big out. And two, how many times do you practice that? I mean, that's something that Every you are always going to practice. You talk about the experience that she has. And two, I mean, just she didn't rush it. And that's no. how you could tell. There was nothing was rushed. She didn't try to, you know, look where she was throwing before she was able to corral the ball. So just all around that great was effort. second nature throw. And that's not an easy throw to go from looking completely behind you, looking at the wall, to then the, the hardest part of this whole thing is not necessarily fielding it cleanly off the wall. It's turning around and finding second base and making an accurate throw to second base. Off so speed. Very much a two-part play and yeah, off speed pitch. Once pencil once pinholster gets in and gets comfortable, that's gonna be nasty. And Bigham was out in front, was able to hold back the swing though. Two gone, bases clear. Tries to go inside. And she does have some velocity inside, going back to that strike three pitch earlier. With that pitch, if it's a little further on the plate, I mean, that's deadly because you're not going to do anything like that with it bearing it on your hands. Yep. It's definitely working. It's a little bit high, too. Belt height. Hard to get around on. Three and one. They go low, and it misses. So a two-out walk will net Clemson another base runner. The key right here, you want to strand that runner at first. Clemson's done a good job of taking advantage of free passes, hit by pitches. But with two outs, and look who's up to bat. This looks like we may have a change, little pinch runner change. Yeah, Mackenzie Clark is about to step up the plate. And <laughs> You know, Bruce had a fantastic at bat, bat yeah. and was able to, you know, that, to me that was, we talked about it when we went to commercial. It was a veteran move knowing that she could get the young freshman out, but that's going to pay dividends for Clark yep. when she comes up and later on in the season. As you see Carly Shannon comes on as a pinch runner for the Tigers, adds a little more speed on the base paths. Yeah, that was definitely a pivotal part of the game for Bruce to be able to close out the inning on such a performance player and now we see her stepping in late in the game we'll see how she performs late in the game so here's Clark with a chance to extend the inning for the Tigers they'd love to blow it wide open right here and have a healthy margin heading into the top half of the seventh Jackets the opposite want to get out and get their bats back out there and try to rally back Side, throw down on the money, but she got in under the tag. You couldn't have asked for a better throw, but maybe a little oh, slow developing. But she looks like she was called out. Probably, oh. I would say, leaving early. I think it was. Because of the call now, I mean, seconds. Half of a second, she was definitely got in, but looks like she definitely left early. Well, the Jackets get their three outs. Two of them came on pivotal plays. We head to the top of the seventh inning where Georgia Tech will look to mount a rally to extend this game.
We're back here in Atlanta. Clemson leads it to 5-2-3 as the Jackets in the top of the seventh inning will look to mount a rally. They need two runs to keep it going and three to win. And, Sam, it's do or die right now for Georgia Tech. At this point, you've got to put all those past opportunities. You can't look at the stats anymore. You just know I've got three outs to work with to get two runs or more. Definitely do or die is a good way to put it. Um, it'll certainly be telling to see how Georgia Tech responds. So looking at where we are in the lineup, we're kind of in the later middle portion of the lineup. A couple of key performers who have been productive so far in this weekend's appearance have the opportunity to now come in and get the momentum started so that they could turn the lineup over and potentially make this a ball game. Yeah, Six-hole hitter Bree Roper is up at the plate for Georgia Tech. A little another lefty on the lefty and two quick strikes here have her in the hole 0 and 2. Roper off to a slow start this season, only batting 174, but she can get some momentum going by getting on base here. Definitely for a player like Roper in her junior season, she's been a top performer for Georgia Tech. So of all the people that are on the field, Opponents are going to have the most scouting report on her, right? They're going to be able to put together the most thoughtful approach on how to be successful against Roper in any situation because they have her stats, they have her film, they know how to play against her. This is going to be a tough season for her. Well, Half-hearted swing is she had her fooled on the off speed on that one. That was a nasty pitch. Maybe goes back to the science you were talking about earlier, the lefty on lefty for out number one. Super thoughtful approach, off speed pitch, really difficult. You see her kind of just like throw her bat out. And the thought there is that maybe if you can just tip it, touch it, something. Um, but that's a difficult, difficult pitch to defend. I'll tell you, Millie Thompson had a little strut after that one, knowing that she got a big out number one at the top of the seventh. Definitely seen some personality out of this one. You got to love just it. a couple. Yeah, you know. The personalities, both back and forth. One ball, one strike. That, that personality, though, that's something that gives you an indication of the level of confidence that a freshman has when they come in. So just as much as it can be a little bit dangerous, a little bit of a risk to have that when you come in because that's one of the first things that can be humbled in a way, right? When, you, when you're challenged. So as a freshman, you come in, you have success because nobody knows you, nobody knows how to play against you or what to expect. And then they get the film and then they get the strategy. And so then they know how to play against you. They know exactly what to expect. And so it'll be interesting to see kind of how she navigates administering that, that energy because it is a marathon of a season. Oh, yeah. And, and it can be difficult to maintain that level of... Soft fly ball, a late diving catch. And off fielder, that's going to be out number two. To, to piggyback off what you're saying, too, and that's, I think, it's what separates, you know, the good players and the great ones, their ability to navigate that, as you see right here. Kind of off the end of the bat, maybe a little bit misjudged there, but a nice job by Oda to come up and get that one. Misjudged, went ahead and fell on it to secure the catch, which can be a risk sometimes just because diving adds another level of contact that can jar you. It changes your level of vision. So, right, you're moving from standing to then being on the ground. So having to track the ball all the way into your glove, there's a lot of room for error, but sometimes it's nice to just go ahead and secure that guy in the glove. There's a big second out here in the top of the seventh inning. 0-1 count to Bailey Zeitler. She'll try to extend the ball game here for the Yellow Jackets. Another off speed. Oh, two. Line drive, hard hit. And who other than Clark to haul in? As she put a nice swing on that one, but out number three. The final score in game one. We'll be back for game two a little later on, but Clemson wins this one by a margin of five to three. It was a great offensive game. Clemson got off to a good start. Georgia Tech battled back, but just too little, too late.
So for Bryce Kuhn, I'm Bryce Kuhn. For Sam Peter Nunzi, this has been a presentation of ACC Softball on the ACC Network.